This lesson deals with a superposition example. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 8, starting on page 39. Given this example with two voltage sources, where the amplitudes are different and the phase angles are different, but the frequency is the same. Can you solve for the voltage V sub R of T in steady state? So we'll use our three-step algorithm to solve for V sub R of T. So the first step is to transform the circuit from the time domain to the frequency domain. So here I have an inductor of two millihenries, frequency is 5,000 radians per second, so J omega L turns out to be J 10 ohms. For this inductance, J 5,000 times the six millihenries is J 30. For the capacitor, which is 20 microfarads, that's minus J over omega C, and that turns out to be minus J 10 ohms. 100 at angle zero for the voltage source, 120 at angle 30. Step two of our algorithm is to do an AC circuit analysis. Now we've got two sources, and in an ECE 201, we had a theorem called superposition. And in proving that theorem, we used Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, and Kirchhoff's current law. As we argued earlier in this chapter, that whenever you use those in a proof, things that were true in the time domain are also true in the frequency domain. So we can apply superposition here too. So we're going to set all the independent sources equal to zero but one, find the response due to that, and just repeat that process. So let's call the voltage across the resistor V sub R prime due to the first source, and you can pick either one as your first source. So I'll set the source on the right-hand side equal to zero, and that was over here. And now I've got a voltage divider. So this impedance here will voltage divide with this one. And again, any theorem that uses Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws in the time domain will work in the frequency domain. All right, the product over the sum here would be minus J10 times J30 over minus J10 plus J30. That gives me a J squared, which is a minus one, times another minus one, so I get 300 divided by 20, and that's a minus J15. Remember, one over J is equal to minus J. Now I'll take that result and put it in parallel with this, again, with product over the sum. So 20 times minus J15 over 20 plus a minus J15. So this gives me a minus J300. I'll multiply by the complex conjugate to get this into rectangular form. So 20 plus J15, 20 plus J15, just multiplying by one. So when you multiply this times this, we get the real part squared, and we get the imaginary part squared. Again, the reason for that is that the inner product terms are the same, but opposite sign. And of course, when you multiply these two, you get a J squared, and that cancels the minus sign. For the numerator, and multiply this through, I get a minus J 300 times 20, and that's a minus J 6,000. And then minus J 300 times J 15 is gonna be equal to 4,500, and then I get a J squared, which gives me a minus one, canceling the other minus one. Squaring this and adding, I get 625, and just rearrange these in terms of real and imaginary. Then dividing this through, I get 7.2, and then a minus J9.6. And I can do the voltage divider. So this impedance over this impedance plus this one times the input voltage of 100 at angle zero will give me the voltage across the resistor to the first source. So 7.2 minus J9.6, and then adding the J10 times this, Let's add these together here, real plus real, imaginary plus imaginary, so 7.2, and then a plus J.4. Because we're doing a ratio, let's put this into polar form. So I'll put this in my calculator, get a magnitude and angle. it will have to be longer than either of these two, because again, this is the hypotenuse. And then the angle, we're going to be in, in the fourth quadrant, because this is the real part is positive and the imaginary part is negative. Now, because this is longer than this, will be more negative than minus 45 degrees. When these are equal to each other, we'll get minus 45, but this is a little bit longer, so we're closer to minus 90. Likewise here, we'll get a magnitude a little bit bigger than 7.2, and the angle is very close to zero degrees because this is much longer than this, so it's 3.18. So 100 times 12 divided by 7.211 is 166.4, zero minus 53.13, and then minus 3.18 is a negative 56.31. I'm going to add results. Let me put this into rectangular form so I can do that. Punch this in my calculator and get the real part and the imaginary part. And again, I'll be in the fourth quadrant, so that makes sense. These two lengths are shorter than this. And this length is going to be longer than this one because we have an angle more negative than 45 degrees. Now, the second part of superposition is to set the other voltage source equal to zero, which was over here, and do the same thing. We'll find the voltage across the resistance due to the second source. And again, I've got a voltage divider. In the last example, when we did the parallel combination of two of the elements, we did the two imaginary terms together. Let's do that again, actually. When you're in parallel, you can put them in any order. But when you do that, the algebra is a lot easier because you just have purely imaginary terms. So here, the product over the sum is going to be J10 times minus J10, but over J10 minus J10. 
And that's going to be equal to zero in the denominator, but the numerator isn't zero, so it's going to approach an open circuit. So all you see here is just the 20 ohms. In a sense, these are resonating with each other. So my voltage divider now is going to be Z3, which is just 20, voltage divided with the J30, and the input here of 120 at angle 30 degrees. This is just 20 at angle zero, and again, I'm just going to put this in my calculator. I'll get a length a little bit longer than 30, that looks about right. I'm going to be in the first quadrant with an angle greater than 45 degrees because this is longer than this. Again, if these were equal to each other, we'd have a 45 degree angle. So 120 times 20 divided by 36.1 is 66.48. And then the angle is 30 plus 0 minus 56.31. And that's a negative 26.3. Again, I'm going to be adding results. Let me put this into rectangular form. So I'm going to multiply by the cosine and then plus j times the sine. You can do this in a two-step process in your calculator. Just add the two results together. First result plus the second result, so real plus real, imaginary plus imaginary, and I get 151.9 minus J167.96. And enter these two numbers in your calculator, and you'll get out the magnitude and the angle. And so it'll be a little bit longer than either of these two, so that seems reasonable. This is a little bit longer than this, so we're going to be more negative than 45, but pretty close to it. So here's minus 47.87. Again, it seems reasonable. How to transform back into the time domain is our last step. All we're going to do is put the cosine of omega t between the magnitude and the angle. So our answer then is 226.46 cosine of the quantity omega t, 5,000 times t, minus 47.87, and the units are volts. And this is an example that uses superposition.